Welcome to Papa's Workshop. On this 4th of July weekend, I decided to take the opportunity to be able to repair this flag wind chime. Now I've had this around the shop for quite some time and this has been in my to-do pile and I just haven't got to it. Well, I think the 4th of July weekend was the perfect time to be able to restore this. I needed to be able to revitalize the stripes on here and replace quite a few of the stripes that were missing. So I think this turned out real good and I want to take you just a few minutes to show you how I did it. So let's get started. When I was cleaning up the shop the other day, I found this American flag wind chime and I'm missing three of the stripes. So today I want to be able to repair this. First thing I did, I just dusted it off and cleaned it up. And then I just took a piece of paper and placed it over this one remaining stripe and traced it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And then from there, I'm going to use this plywood, which is the same thickness, and be able to take my pattern and draw it on here and then cut it out on the scroll saw. Making a simple pattern out of the paper is a great way to be able to duplicate the stripes. I've got three red stripes to be able to duplicate and this works quite well. Now I will say this, if I had some thicker paper, it would probably work even better. But this is what I had to work with and I think it's gonna do pretty good. Now I use the edge of the pencil to be able to scribe my line to be able to create the pattern. And that actually worked real well because it left a good definite line for me to be able to follow to be able to make this cutout. And I'm gonna see how that fits in there. I think that's going to work out pretty good. It's not really thick enough to be able to support it, but I think that will fit. I may need to trim the length just a little bit, but if I place that over my original, there we go, that matches really well. So now I'm going to take my pattern and be able to trace that onto my plywood. Here's where the thicker paper would have actually paid off, but still I was able to hold it in place and uh, draw the pattern out. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close enough, if you will, because once this is cut out, I'm just gonna go ahead and sand it, smooth it, and shape it to the final size. And I'll slide this down and draw another one. Now I'm going to leave just a little bit of space between them for the blade to account for the blade. And any excess I'll just trim off in the end with the sander. I think that looks good. And hopefully I can get one more in here. Yeah, I think that's going to work just fine. Nice thing about doing all three at one time, it actually is easier to cut out than trying to do each one individually. Okay, now to the scroll saw, and I'm going to cut these out. I'm going to save this pattern just in case I need it. But that's going to be the line that I cut. And any little bit of adjustment will be made with the sander. So that's what it looks like for my three stripes. I think using the scroll saw for this is the absolute perfect tool for this. 
because it allows for a very thin blade to be able to cut between these stripes and it's very easy to be able to maneuver to be able to cut them out. And the other nice thing about doing all three at once, all I have to be able to do is split these two in half, for an example, and I don't have to cut each one individually. Again, any little small adjustment will be done on the sander. All right, let's head over to the oscillating sander now. Initially, what I want to be able to do is smooth out any rough places and be able to go ahead and take the pencil line that may be remaining. Now this is where the real fun begins because now I want to be able to fit each piece and make sure that I trim it exactly the way it needs to be. Now because this is such a small uh, flag, being able to take care of the details is very important. So I want to be able to make very small adjustments to be able to get this trimmed just right. A little bit of additional sanding just to clean up the edges and these stripes are going to be ready for paint. Now the next thing I have to do is clean up these areas where there's the little pieces of wood still stuck on there. But those are my three stripes that I need. So let me go ahead and clean this up now. To be able to clean this uh, old glue and this little bit of wood off of this, I'm using a very sharp chisel. And one of the things I want to be able to do is take my time with this and work it very slowly. And of course, I want to be able to keep my fingers out of the way. Because for me, this is one of the most dangerous tools in the shop. If there's a way to be able to get cut, I'll do it. So I want to be very careful and make sure that my fingers are out of the way and again cut this very slow and trim it until it's nice and smooth. Now as I'm using the chisel and cutting out this old glue and these little pieces of wood, I want to be able to check for smoothness often okay. and I also want to be able to take the actual piece and drop right it in, in position and see how it That's fits. Perfect. And I'm going to do this until I get it perfectly smooth and until I get it to fit just exactly the way I want it. Now then, all we need to do is match this stain and go ahead and get these stripes painted. And we'll be ready to assemble this. And we're going to pre-stain this ahead of time so that it does not get any stain over where we don't want it. Now, in looking at this flag, I was thinking that the three red stripes were all that's missing. But if I actually look at it and flip this over, I have a white stripe that's missing here, and I have a white stripe that's missing here. So I've got some additional work to do. I've got to create these two white stripes to be able to add to this flag. Now, I use the same technique to be able to create the pattern. But because this stripe is so much longer, I actually grabbed a piece of tape and taped it down. The other thing, of course, I want the grain of the wood to be able to run the lengthwise with the stripe. So that meant I needed, of course, use a larger piece of plywood and I needed to be able to place it on this wood where the grain was running the direction that I wanted it. Once I have this pattern taped down, then I can use the pencil and just go ahead and trace this pattern out. Now the tape helps hold this in position so that it doesn't move, but because this is very lightweight paper, I still have to hold it and make sure that it doesn't move as I'm drawing my pattern onto the plywood. Okay, now that I've got the pattern for this one, and I want this to be able to run with the grain. so. I'm going to cut it out this way. It was too short over here, and I did not want to run it across the grain. So this is going to be the best way to be able to do it. Okay. Let's take a look at that. That will sit right in there. A little bit of sanding, and that's going to be ready. There's a high spot here. And a little bit of a high spot right there. So I'm going to have to trim that. 
Let me take this over to the sander and clean this up. And this will be ready to put in. And I already have the other one prepared that will drop in right there. And I'm going to get those glued in. And then we'll flip over and still work on the front side for the red stripes. Now this glue and the little pieces of wood that are still on this actually come off fairly easy. Once you get the chisel underneath the glue, then it actually peels off. All right, these two are ready to go in. Nope, that's a high spot there. Attention to detail is definitely the most important thing on a small project like this. So I just need to clean up just a little bit more of the old glue and the wood that was stuck down before these two pieces actually fit exactly the way they, way they needed to. Now to secure these stripes in place, I'm going to use the thick CA glue from Starbond. And don't forget, look in the description below. I have a 15% discount for the glues from Starbond. And of course, I'm going to use the accelerator by Starbond as well. Doesn't take a whole lot. Just a little drop on each side. Then we'll position that right in place. Push it down, hold it for just a moment, and that's it. Now we'll do the same thing for this one. Now I think what I'm going to do this time is put the glue on here. Drop there, a drop in the center, and a drop over on this end. Just to double check. Yep, that's the way it wants to go. Then we'll position that exactly where I want it. And just like that, this side's done. Now to mix this paint, I'm using a little bit of this red. I'm also using the brown. And I have a few drops of the black that I put in also. Now then, the other thing that I want to do is thin this just a little bit. It's not going to take a whole lot of water. But I do want to thin this down to give more of a stain type effect rather than a paint. By adding the water to this, it does create a stain, but a better term to use is a wash. I really don't want the stripes to look like they were painted. I want it to look like they were stained with this wash. Now one of the things you're not gonna ever match the color perfectly, so what I'm gonna do is paint all of these stripes. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these three first so that they'll start to dry. And then I'll come back and paint the rest of the stripes. But I think you can see the color is not bad. And of course it dries a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these. And I'll be back in just a few moments and show you the results. Okay, I have the three stripes drying over here and you can see the colors a little bit darker but I think it's going to really make the flag stand out so while I let those dry I'm going to go ahead and add the color to the remaining stripes okay I've got everything painted now and I wanted to go back and look at the position of all of it I think this looks really just fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these on now. 
And again, I'm using the thick Starbond glue to be able to attach these. And all I'm doing is just putting a little drop right there and then a drop on this side. I'm using just a little bit of the accelerator. And dropping it right in place. And I'm going to repeat this process now for the other two. And I'll be back in a moment. Well, I think this is turning out really good. This is the last stripe that's going into place. And this flag has been completely restored. And I'm ready to be able to hang it in the shop. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.